Hi, my name is Sonia Wong and I'm a CPA based in South Orange County, as well as a founding member of the of QX Financial. And uh, I would like to welcome a friend of the channel, uh, Phil Shakurlian, to our discussion. Thank you for having me, Sonia. It's great to be back. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And this is our next series, next video in uh, the video, the discussion about estate planning. So I'd like to um, give you the floor. Yeah, I um, yeah, I've got some some more to talk about asset protection, but I thought maybe uh, maybe we could learn a little bit about you. Sonia, since you are uh, new on this program, tell us, you know, we, we've heard about you professionally. Uh, tell us about yourself personally. You know, what do you enjoy doing and, and what, uh, what piques your interest? Well, you know, in my spare time, I love to uh, foster animals. Uh, I most recently placed a Rottweiler mix in his new home in Marina del Rey. So he, he's having a wonderful time and it, it's very gratifying to me to be able to help you know those who can't help themselves and that that extends to people as well um, oh, I, yeah i apply that principle to people who want to do better and i'm more than happy to help them get to the next level that they want to advance to that's excellent yeah. good for you that's that's a great thing to do yeah and, and uh how about you phil uh yeah you know i um i shared in the past but um you know things things change over time i uh you know, I'm a season seat holder to the Angels and Ducks, and uh, I think since we've done these videos, I've been able to go to zero games um, due oh, to yeah. the current uh, coronavirus, you know, COVID-19 situation. Um, but there may be a little bit of glimpse of light at the end of the uh, tunnel. Uh, apparently, I was notified that spring training will be uh, up and running in Arizona this year, and so I'm just waiting for... Uh, an email from my season seat rep to get some tickets to go out to Arizona and go see some spring training. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, that'll, that'll be interesting. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. Um, you know, back to the asset protection, we've uh, up until this point, we've talked about how to use businesses, how to use irrevocable trusts uh, about using your homestead and also getting general liability insurance to protect your assets from creditors. Um, there's a couple of more ways that, that can be used as well. Um, one way is called equity stripping. Um, so this is, you have to be very careful when you do equity stripping because um, if it's not done properly, it could be what's considered fraudulent transfers or, or just straight fraud for that matter. And it could be criminally punishable. So you really don't wanna mess with equity stripping unless you really know what you're doing. Um, but essentially what equity stripping is, it's where you remove the equity from your assets. So that if you were sued, the assets have no value and there's nothing to recover from the person suing you. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, the most common way is to take a loan out against whatever the asset is. So for instance, I, let's say I own a home and that home has, um, you know, a hundred, hundred thousand dollars in equity in it i could go and if my lender approves i could do a home equity line of credit or a heloc um, for ninety thousand dollars against my home and therefore i, I take that ninety thousand dollars out i put that somewhere where it's safe and protected and now there's only ten thousand dollars in equity in my home and if i were to sell the home that any creditor coming after me would only get that ten thousand rather than the full hundred thousand um that's that's typically the way that that equity stripping works. Um, some people get creative and they will say that, um, you know, their, their spouse or no, not their spouse, but uh, a sibling or a friend or something, they will execute a promissory note with them. And then their friend will um, issue a, a lien on the property for that amount. Um, typically, a lot of people do that improperly and they don't actually exchange the money when in order to protect yourself and avoid the fraud, you actually have to exchange the money. So if I went to my, you know, my sister and said, hey, I need to borrow $100,000, um, she could put that, that um, deed of trust on my home saying that she's the first creditor in line if there's, if there's a sale, and then that protects against any other creditors. But she would actually have to give me that $100,000 and then I would have to uh, protect that $100,000 in, in another way, shape or form. It's obviously much easier to protect cash than it is a house that's planted down onto the ground. 
Right. Um, and and really, there's there's a lot more that goes with that as well because you have you have the order of the creditors and their preference. You know, you may have uh, I may have a mortgage on that home and I'm taking a loan from my sister, and that means that the the lender would be the first priority. My sister would become the second priority. Now they are both secured debt, so they will both have priority over any other uh, unsecured creditors that may have been there before or after. Um, but there's there's a lot of rules that, that apply to determine who has the priority in those situations. Um, and and then, you know, the other thing to consider with equity stripping is if I do strip all the equity out of my home and I keep that home for another 10 years and I continue to pay into it, I may have just built up another 100, 200,000 in equity and therefore, um, you know, I, I would need to either do another loan or another HELOC or whatever, or figure out another way to strip the equity then because that money is now exposed again. So it, it is a way to do it, but it's not, it's really not one of the best ways, um, but it is, it, it can work really well with some other types of planning done as well. Mm -hmm. How far in advance would we need to do the equity stripping? Well, so that's a very good question. So um, it really depends on where you are doing it. If you are here in the state of California, there is a two year look back period for what's considered a fraudulent transfer. Uh, and what that means is that if, if I transferred my, if I did an equity strip or if I put my house into an irrevocable trust or an LLC or anything along those lines, and I did that uh, within the last two years and somebody sues me, that creditor could go back two years if there is a chance that you knew that there is a potential for that lawsuit. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So what would happen is, is, is even though you did that protection, the courts would invalidate that protection as to this one particular creditor within that two year window. So you really have to do this at least two years before there is any threat of a lawsuit. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's good because um, I, I guess, yeah, you never want to give anyone the impression that you're trying to commit fraud or do anything unseemly. So absolutely. Yeah, this is a great uh, rule of thumb. Absolutely. So then the last way, that, or actually the second last way that I wanted to talk about would be um, something called ERISA. It's the Employment Retirement Income Security Act. This is a federal law that protects all qualified retirement accounts. Um, and so you ask, what is a qualified retirement account? Well, that is, is typically any account that you put, um, put your earnings into that is pre-tax dollars. So it's, it's tax deferred money. And then you let that money grow in whatever type of uh, account you put it in. And then in the future, when you withdraw the money, that's when you pay the taxes on the income. The, there's, there's several types, you know, the most popular, like a 401k, a 403b, um, an IRA, keto plans, annuities, you know, qualified annuities, profit sharing plans for business, things along those lines, ESOPs. Um, those are all, all types of qualified plans. They're typically set up by an employer, but sometimes you could do a self-directed one as well. Um, we were actually, Sonia and I were having a conversation earlier uh, about the fact that it is now legal to put cryptocurrency into a qualified account. Um, previously, that was not the case, um, and it, it, it is now. So I, um, I'm actually going to follow up with Sonia. Maybe we might have another video about this in the future. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to learn more about how, you know, what the ins and outs are of allowing cryptocurrency into a qualified account is. Yeah. Well, and uh, the other thing is, is uh, self, you know, we can't hold collect, we still can't hold collectibles in our uh, IRAs. So, yeah. Absolutely. So hopefully that's not an issue for you or any of our viewers, but yeah, I'm excited about the cryptocurrency uh, capabilities in there. Yeah, myself as well. Yeah. So, so back to the asset protection. So yeah. if you have any type of these qualified accounts, the good news is you have automatic protection. Um, under ERISA, there, no creditor can take your retirement money from you out of these accounts. They cannot force a distribution. They cannot, you know, attach to the account. They can't do any of that. Now, what they could do is if you were receiving distributions, they could garnish some of those distributions. Um, 
you know, if you are under age 72 and a half, you could just stop taking distributions and then they can't get any of it. If you're over 72 and a half, then you are required to take distributions from these accounts and therefore they could try to garnish that or take it once it hits your bank account. Um, <clears throat> but there's ways to work around that as well. Um, so that's the good news. And you don't have to see myself or, or Sonia or anybody else to get that protection. It's automatic. Um, so that's a consideration to take when debating whether or not to set up a qualified plan, uh, but it's just one of many considerations. So you should absolutely, you know, contact QX Financial and Sonia um, to determine if a qualified plan is right for you. Yeah. yeah. The last, last way to do asset protection is offshore planning. I'm sure most people have heard of this. It is essentially storing or hiding your assets offshore in another country so that the anything in the United States doesn't apply to it. Um, there is legal ways to do this and illegal ways to do this. Um, a lot of the times when this is done, it is um, the protection itself is legal as long as you are paying US taxes on it. Um, typically, when you stop paying the US taxes on it, that's when it becomes quite illegal. So it's really important to to make sure that this is done properly. Um, otherwise, you could be doing something illegal that's punishable by time in prison. Um, this offers the greatest protection that you could have. There's really not any other type of protection that if this is done properly, will will protect your assets here in the United States as well. Uh, but like I said, it also has the greatest risk. It's it's the easiest to to become illegal and comes with the potential for the most prison time out of all of these structures if you do it incorrectly. Um, so once again, it's, it's something that you really need to hire a professional to do. Now, I know quite a bit about asset protection and taxes and planning and stuff, but I don't do offshore planning. The reason being is this is a very specialized uh, a niche of, of planning, and there is so many more rules that go into that that I couldn't possibly do everything I do and know everything about offshore planning. So when looking for somebody, make sure to find somebody that specializes in offshore planning and offshore taxes as well, international taxes. Um, and those are the ways to protect your assets. Um, you know, there may be some other creative ways out there, but those are the by far the typical ways to protect your assets. Um, so I hope that's help, helped out. And if you have any questions on how to protect your own assets, give me a call. I'd be happy to give a free consultation because really it works on a case by case basis and your facts and, and situation are going to be different from somebody else's as to what works best. Well, thank you very much, Phil. And yeah, I mean, that is our objective to, to help our clients protect their assets and keep them out of jail. So. Absolutely. <laughs> So uh, thank you very much, viewers, for watching this video. And uh, please like, share, and subscribe uh, our content and uh, visit Phil's website. So thank you very much. And everybody stay safe. Have a great one. Thanks. You too.